What is your favourite view? Is it rolling hills, rainforests, mountains, the sea, gardens, flowers, trees? I love all these views and my favourite would be trees. When I was growing up, the view from my bedroom window was a corrugated fibro factory wall. The street was cement and bitumen. There were no nature strips or trees and none of the houses had front gardens. I remember loving the trees in the school playground. There were two massive gum trees that fascinated me. I loved their mottled bark, their white limbs, their long curving leaves. What is it about nature that calms us and makes us happy? Genesis tells us the great truth that we all come from the earth and we all belong to the earth, the sea and the sky. Recently, in fact, scientists have found that our bodies are composed of the same material as stars. 90% of our mass is stardust. Awesome. When things are not going well for our environment, it is natural to feel sad and worried. We often think that what we do isn't going to make any difference. There are solutions, but they might not always be what we want. They might not be easy and they might take time, but they will work. Sometimes these solutions involve changing what we do or how we do things. And sometimes the solution is to stop doing new things altogether and start doing old things again. Some of the good old fashioned practices that our great grandparents employed. Can you think of some? Things that will put us in greater contact with our environment. Things that will reduce waste, that will recycle, that will reduce the amount of resources that we need to buy. Most backyards used to have a lemon tree and at least one other fruit tree or vine. A compost heap was there for veggie scraps, a vegetable patch and a herb garden and sometimes there was even a chicken coop. Excess produce from the vegetable patch or the trees was preserved or it was frozen and often shared with families and neighbour. Most kitchens had a compost bucket for vegetable and fruit scraps. This was emptied into the compost or given to the chickens. Most often washing water was recycled by using it in the garden. Cardboard paper and leaves were used as mulch to keep the moisture in the soil. And people had things repaired rather than replacing them when they broke. Rather than wrapping in plastic or putting in plastic bags, things were kept in containers for storage. Instead of buying small things in plastic wrapping, things were bought in bulk or in paper that could be reused. People kept an eye on the food in the fridge and the cupboard and used it up before it went off. Here is a list of just some new things that we can do. But if you look at it, you will see that these aren't completely new either. Hydroelectricity has been around for a very long time. And now there are even more renewable energy choices, including appliances such as solar hot water or even solar air conditioning. Sometimes people think that they need to have plenty of space to do these things, but they don't. My daughter Anna lives in a one bedroom apartment with her husband and toddler and she does most of these things. Oh, well, of course, not the chickens. Let's look at some of these things. I expect that most of your families are doing some, if not most of them. How about choosing two new ones for this year? Can you think of two things that you can do? I found two things. We have started to recycle soft plastics and I'm turning my kettle off at the power point. These things might seem small, but in time, all the things will make a difference. Bishop Tutu once said, Do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good 
that when put together, overwhelm the world. <laughs>